So we're here at this amazing megalithic site called Monte Baranto. It's near a village or a town called Almeida and it's part of the Monte Clero culture. They go way back long before the Naraji, the Bronze Age peoples of Sardinia. So this is like a pre naraji megalithic construction. It's absolutely huge. There's like a kind of moon-shaped crescent megalithic construction with two doorways, very Mycenaean, huge megalithic blocks, cyclopean construction, not dissimilar to what we find all over the west coast of Italy. So is there a Pelasgian connection or even the Etruscans, were they even in this area? So there's big questions to be asked about who these people really were, but they were said to uh, have originated in the south and made their way up through the land before the Naraji, kind of in between the Aziri culture and the uh, Naraji culture. So you have this beautiful curved interior here looking out into the valley. And here's uh, the second entrance or exit. Just came through that one. We're gonna go through this one and then we're gonna head to the main sort of sacred area of the site where there's a fallen monolith. There's a cyclopean wall. There's even said to be some kind of megalithic circle. So this one here is related to the equinox, right? At the equinox, and here, anyway, you have the sun rising. And the other corridor that looks north must have been connected to uh, the Big Dipper. As we know, the Big Dipper was a very, very important astral point for the pre neuragic people. It was the place where the souls of the ancestor lived. It was the place where these people came from in their vision. Okay, they were people from the stars and they came from that uh, constellation. So here then we have two directions and so it's strictly correlated to astral uh, positions. So it really was a place for rituals and to honor their memory, their tradition, and to honor the sun, which is a very, of course, we know already it was so important to these people. Oh, you see, there are like two cup marks, sorts of cup marks here, you see here. And so, actually, this could be used to amplify the energy of the place because we have seen they are sorts of acupuncture points. So if you put some water or imagine you put a stone or a crystal, you can enhance the energy of this place for the rituals. And again, here we find a sort of parable, just like in the giant's graves. And we know already that this is a kind of uh, uh, geometrical structure that enhances the energy of the place. So it's just very good when you have a ritual. If you just look at these huge megalithic blocks, this is just you know, on the edge of a cliff here. Then we have these huge megalithic blocks making up this cyclopean wall with a massive lintel there. And it continues around to the second doorway and then off the cliff again in a crescent shape. If we just go through here, you can just see the size of this rock here. It's quite remarkable. And uh, you can see some of the stones within the chamber or avenue itself and if we come around the other side over there behind those trees is the rest of the um, uh, complex there's a huge monolith that's now fallen there's a massive megalithic cyclopean wall that stretches that like, surrounds a whole part of the sacred area then we have this massive megalithic kind of crescent complex and you can see the stones here just quite remarkable and up here as well just piled on kind of roughly but very accurately as well because to move these stones alone is a heavy heavy job so this really does remind me of all the sites the megalithic walls the the, the circular walls surrounding cities uh, all through the west coast of Italy these are pre-Etruscan sites potentially according to Gary Bilcliffe they were the Pelasgians who were the seafarers who were the, the megalithic builders of the Neolithic time before the Etruscans, before uh, the Aziri and the Naraji. But who knows? Who knows who these people really were? But it's got very Mycenaean influences. 
Um, but as you can see, as we look round the whole site here and see it from the air, you can see this is very megalithic. Now, they know it's not Naraji because no Naraji finds have been found here. Uh, the Monte Claro culture are very interesting. There's not much known about them. There's just a few pieces here and there, a few sites, but this is probably their most important site of the, in the whole of Sardinia. Very interesting. This is like being completely closed down. It officially opened in 2015. And there was a big ceremony, all local people, the mayor and everyone came up here. But now they've got a block gate, no entry, private road. You have to climb over the gate. There's no one here. And people just don't seem to visit this site anymore. This is, this is amazing. Look, you just see the size of these stones here. Now this isn't, this isn't polygonal walls, this is cyclopean walls. So it just means extremely large, rough hewn stones placed relatively accurately. But look, it's got a whole curve to the whole structure. So we know it's been thought about, it's been designed. It's not just been piled together like we find with some of the, um, some of the more rough and nuraj's. But it's, it reminds me very much of Mycenae, the way the whole shape comes up into the, a point, which is what we do find all over Italy in some places, uh, as well as Greece, obviously. So uh, very intriguing. It's not a burial chamber by the looks of it. This looks like it's a sacred area. So we're at the very first part of the huge megalithic wall, which is part of this site called Monte Baranzo. You can just see the very first part of the wall coming up the hill here with these huge cyclopean, almost polygonal blocks that make up the main part of it. And it continues down there around this corner all down there, you can just see it going further and further down there, and it's been cut flat. You can see the way it's almost been sliced flat. How they did this, we don't know, but we find a similar wall at Machu Picchu in Peru, but also, obviously, the Italian walls have this sort of sliced flat look about them as well. Massive cyclopean constructions, and somehow they kind of slice them like butter. Just seems to go on and on and on, and the stones almost get bigger in parts. All the way over there, you can see it right in the distance on that hilltop. So this is the Grand Men here, the, the great standing stone that once existed here at Monte Baranta. And just behind me here, this looks like some kind of circle of stones. Not really a stone circle as such. Very interesting circular certainly whether this was part of the wall we don't know but the stones look even bigger and a great wall obviously behind us just there to see a close-up of this stone here is quite chunky and then the men here there so it could have even been some kind of calendar men here marking the sun as it moved across the sky during the day in different parts of the year Here comes megalith symbology expert JJ Ainsworth. Here she goes. So we just stumbled from the main site, which is behind that tree, behind that wall. And this looks like cart ruts. Now we just saw this at the site yesterday, which was remarkable, huge cart ruts, but these look really small, but they do seem to be here. And I'm just standing on some, which are massive. So is this another example of classic cart ruts here in Sardinia? And does it suggest the site yesterday was actually built by the same people? This is very, very intriguing indeed. It could just be natural striations in the rock. There's another one here. You can see someone's churned it all up here. 
but these look quite these look small but are these actual cart ruts or just part of the natural stone very hard to tell not being a geologist we have a much smaller wall here but it has standing stones within it but further on we have quite large stones as well so it's the second wall probably surrounding the whole site like some kind of protective seal so we've just reached what appears to be the end of the wall and you can see an entrance there and this is like the very end it goes down the hill there this is where the stones look really beautifully cut actually shaped a lot better but let's just take a look in here got very big stones so look how thick the wall is this is how thick the wall is probably what 10 sorry 12 15 feet then we have the other side of the wall much smaller stones but still quite neatly done so which side they're obviously trying to keep people out here's just the entrance you see jj coming in over there so where jj is just coming in now that's like the entrance this is the other side of the wall the other side of the wall is a much larger stones this has much smaller stones but they're all piled up and it's about what 10 to 20 feet thick in places so this was a serious wall they're building on top of this mountain here uh, to keep whoever out maybe it was the naraji giants or something but it's just very very interesting sites well worth a visit it's really hard to get to um i'll give you the gps if you request it just below in the youtube uh, um, information area um, but you have to still walk about 15 minutes after you've parked at this locked gate which you have to climb over it's an unfor unfortunate situation but if you're a hardened megalithomaniac like me and jj are you'll find it